Jesus loves Christmas in heaven, but he wants us to know that in heaven they call it Christ Day. And every year on that day, people in heaven get excited, they running around saying, today is Christ Day. And declared and heralded throughout heaven are the words, Mary Christ, this day he was born, Mary Christ, the Messiah has come. It is declared only like that because Jesus was born on earth of Mary. She's the woman among all women, so it's only at Christ day that her name is honored as the Holy Mother of Jesus. Mary herself was never meant to be worshipped, down here they pray to Mary. But we ourselves should pray what Mary prayed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. And the devil took the word Mary and turned it into Mary, and changed the word Christ to Christmas, for he didn't want to hear the word Christ. The word Christmas is never mentioned in heaven. And Satan went one step further and replaced the word Christ with an X and made it X mass. This X represents a broken cross on its side thereby mocking Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Yes, there is actually a special tree in heaven that represents Christ Day, just as we have our Christmas tree on earth. Jesus calls it a Chanuka tree. Some people argue that Christmas trees have a pagan origin. But no, everything has its origin in heaven. But on earth, lots of these things are misrepresented and twisted around. The Lord Jesus specifically showed me the Christ Day celebrations. And he wants to show the world the events in heaven on that day. If you could see this massive solid golden tree, the tips of the branches are white, like they have snow sprinkled on them. For Jesus likes a white Christ Day. It's a remembrance that everything was washed white as snow by his blood, that he shed for us on the cross. I know, for I've seen it. Jesus said about this beautiful, amazing golden tree. It's a main focus point in heaven, you cannot miss it. And yes, there are gifts, but they don't go under the tree, they hang on the tree itself. And just because I want to tell you, on the top of the tree there really is a star, not an angel. There's never been an angel to sit on top of Christ day, because I rose above the angels. I saw a scripture circling around the star, it said. The sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God, and he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sin, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows us that the sun is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. Hebrews 1 verse 3 and 4, New Living Translation I saw that this star looked like the Star of David, its light is beaming out in all directions. And it is the same star that the three wise men followed, they were chosen on the earth for that purpose. They are great men in heaven now, very well respected. And they are the ones that the Lord has appointed to put the star on top of the tree. That's an amazing job for them, to put the final touch to the tree. Christ Day is a great celebration, and a very important event in heaven. We celebrate it on earth, but in heaven they truly celebrate it for what it really means. It is about redemption, Christ's coming and redemption was prophesied for centuries before it came to pass. And now it is done, Jesus has won the victory. Jesus said, For the record, I celebrate my birth in December, for that's how the world has recognized it. On that special day the Lord wears a golden robe, with a royal red mantle over his shoulders, set off with white edges. 
The red represents the blood, and white the redemption. He wears a royal purple cummerbund, which is a broad waist sash. It has a specific pattern, with integrated gemstones. The top and bottom edges are set off with 12 diamonds each. The golden center star, which resembles the Star of David, has 12 birthstones set around it. I knew the stones were one for each month, that's where our birthstones come from, but everything on earth has been twisted and misinterpreted, but these were the real ones. The one gem in the center of the golden star is the heavenly December stone, the twelfth month of December is highly favored. It has been picked and chosen by Jesus. The number twelve came originally from the twelve tribes of Israel. There are twelve foundation stones under the walls of the New Jerusalem, in those walls are twelve gates, each gate is made of one large pearl. I know, I've seen it. On earth the common color of the December stone is now blue, but it originally was the ruby, or blood stone, its color is royal red, blood of Jesus red, representing his blood that he shed for our redemption. The bright shining light in the center of the stone represents Jesus as the redeeming light of the world. Meaning that only through his sacrifice, through the blood of Jesus, when it hit God's mercy seat, a way was made for the glory of God to shine forth to all mankind. For it is written, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I am the light of the world, he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. It's the most highly favored and most precious gemstone in heaven, representing Jesus' redemption, and kingship as well. Jesus also wears a crown. He actually has rooms full of crowns. Each crown has a meaning. Jesus may wear them on different occasions. He also gives crowns to his people. Jesus told me. There's a song that plays in heaven on Christ's day, when the people are gathered at the tree, its music floats through heaven. Then everyone enters into praise and singing, it's a day of worship. I was born to die, and to rise up and live, so that you may live also. It's a day of celebration. And the next song is, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. The third song they move into is a worship hymn called, Holy Holy is the Lord God Almighty. It is then that they see Jesus in all his glory, and they are worshipping. All of heaven bows down to his feet. The people and all the angels sing, the animals, the trees, the flowers, all creation in heaven sings. And when the song is finished, there's a moment of silence. Then Jesus summons them. Stunned. And they all rise up. And he asks, Who wants their gifts? And they excitedly start clapping, praising and worshipping.
and nobody knows what kind of gift they are going to receive this year, they all get one from the tree, and the beautiful thing about it is that it's been presented to them personally by the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is first and foremost. And he calls out each one by name, and they arrive there precisely on time to receive their gift. Jesus hands them out with a smile and an encouraging word. And this continues until everyone has received their own personal gift. Jesus said, And let me tell you, each gift is different, they receive what's rewarded to them. And if you look at the presents on the tree, there are all different kinds of gifts in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Jesus is also giving out beautiful multi-layered pearl necklaces to the women, and he puts it around their necks himself, he is very high in jewelry, he loves it, the women desired it on earth, but could never afford such precious necklaces. So Jesus gives them the desires of their hearts, and more. And that necklace promotes the women to have access to certain royal balls that they have each year, yes ladies. There are days when they have fancy festive balls. If you are invited by Jesus, if you are given a pearl necklace, you are going to the pearl ball, every lady gets to dance with the king of kings, and Jesus will be wearing a tuxedo, befitting a king. All the ladies get swirled around in their beautiful gowns, wearing their necklaces, because of rewards, favored daughters for that occasion, The women never know beforehand if they will get the pearls, or some other beautiful gift that is perfect for them that year. There are people of all nationalities waiting for their gift, some receive beautiful special gowns or robes, each one has its own significant meaning. I saw this particular group of men, and they all received the same kind of robe. These robes looked like a combination of a jacket and a robe, they all knew the meaning of it, they were asking each other, are we going to ride with him? Jesus walked up and said, yes, you will ride with me. The Lord was not talking about his second coming on the clouds, as described in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to 16, but Jesus has special great army rides, and every year he selects a different army to ride with him, it is a great honor to ride with the king. Other people who desired a riding robe, but didn't receive one, knew that it was not their turn, and were happy and overjoyed for the people that did receive one. Jesus said, However, there is a desire for certain things like the riding robe. But it's something earned. Everyone in heaven still has a different desire for something, because you still arrive here with your own personality, your individual heart's desires. You do earn the present the Lord gives you. And the angels give a report to Jesus about everyone's study progress and growth. At the end of the year Jesus sees what you have done, and your gift is your reward. Jesus says, You go from glory to glory up here, you work your way up. So you do study and work, but not in a way that we do on earth, not at all. In heaven you have a completely different knowledge of it, I know, for I had the privilege of standing in that knowledge for a few moments. That's where I felt and understood the unspeakable peace that passes human understanding, it completely surrounded my mind. To know that there's never going to be an end to my knowledge, that there's always going to be more and more and more to see and do and learn. And at the end of that there's endlessly more. It is the most satisfying feeling of wholeness there is. It's amazing. Jesus told me, when I overcame death, when I conquered the grave, I conquered the end, when I said on the cross, it is finished, I meant the end is finished, 
I conquered the death of all things, I conquered all endings. It is finished. For I am the Alpha and Omega, I am he that lives, and was dead, and, behold, I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of hell and of death. But now has been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel, 2 Timothy 1, verse 10. Now I want to talk about boats. Believe it or not, Jesus loves boats. He always hung around boats and he is still sleeping and relaxing on them. He finds it peaceful and calming. Some of his greatest disciples were boat people, fishermen. So boating is one of his pastimes, and everybody wants to be part of that. They call it recreation. They get a chance to go with Jesus when he is actually relaxing. No they do not hang on the golden tree. The person receives a nautical flag, and the boat itself is moored at the nearby boat harbor. People who receive one might say, yes, we are part of his recreation this year. They board their boats and they all get a turn of Jesus stepping in their boats. He sits beside them while they cruise the river, and reveals more things about heaven, creation, and the Father to them. I want to tell you more about the Lord's gifts to his animals. Jesus said, Yes, they all receive gifts. No, they don't study. I give them gifts just because I so love my animals. I've created them before I created Adam. I've given my animals everything from tiny bells to cow bells around their necks, ranging from bronze to gold. And they all get excited. There are white eagles that receive fog watches if they are promoted into greater wisdom. They also receive crowns. These go up in levels of increased quality, size and value. Bronze, silver and gold, and these are increasing in elaborate beauty, design and greatness. Everyone, and everything that has breath receives a gift on that day, because all are part of God's creation. The lambs are bouncing and leaping while they are waiting for their gift. They are born in heaven, and grow up there. They are white in color, some have these big brown eyes, others blue. The ones I saw had brown eyes and long eyelashes, so beautiful. So they line up, and some are given little colored jackets for on their backs, and they get different colored ribbons with tiny bells on them which are tied on their tails, and they are jumping and running around making music with them. Some lambs get promoted to where their back jackets are replaced by little comfortable saddles, because they are growing up and moving up to the level where they are given to young children as pets, to be ridden on. So they go to where the child is, they ring their little bells, the child is overjoyed, and they go for a ride together and that child will grow up with that lamb. So it's also a time of promotion. The lambs will compare. Look, I have have the gold bell, says one. Yes that's nice, says the other. I have the saddle, I'll be given as a gift to a little one, I'll be making a child happy today. Jesus says, no, you will not find a nativity setting under my tree. I'm still an infant in them, my earthly mother and father are so much bigger, even the camels and sheep are bigger than me, and because of that, many people who don't know me, only remember me once a year as a cute little Christmas baby, as a decoration item. But they do not care about who I really am, and what great things I did for them as a man. And up here you don't hear the hymn, Silent Night, being sung. Let me tell you, there was nothing silent about that night. There was praise in there, the animals, the angels and everything that had breath that night, praised me the moment I arrived. It was noisy, and loud. Loud with praises, 
before I was long expected. I wanted you to know that.